My Instagram got hacked by somebody and I can't get back in and Instagram has no customer support or anything. So if you follow me on Instagram, uh, do not listen to any of my get rich quick schemes because they're not me. It's some idiot in Los Angeles and you know, he, he, he messed with the wrong, like I got way too many like spooky, scary dudes in the government that can do things to this guy. But first things first, I got to get my account back and it's been pretty much impossible. So if you follow me on Instagram, uh, just don't listen to any messages you might get from me because that's not me. And if you have any questions, you can DM me on here or hit the comment section below. Let's get on with the video. Bobber in the bo bobbing up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down. Oh, howdy, lads and lassies. Welcome back to the channel. New Year's resolutions, hunting edition. Okay, so I have been spearfishing for a long time, since like 2000, wow. I mean, I used to spearfish when I was a kid, like when the waves were dead in La Jolla Shores. If there was no surf, I would go spearfishing. So that's something I've been doing for a long time, but seriously spearfishing, about 12 years. Now, I just got into hunting in general. Uh, this would be 2020, 2020. I got really into hunting and it started off, I went dove hunting. After that, I bought a bow, got really into bow hunting. I didn't spearfish as much. Uh, due to a shark attack. Long story. Maybe someday I'll share that on here. And then uh, I got really into bow hunting and duck hunting. Duck was one that I kind of got obsessed with as well. But I today want to talk about my New Year's resolutions, hunting goals for 2023. First and foremost, and I'm going to make a whole different video about this, but uh, my physical fitness. I want to be even more physically fit than I was last year. And I felt good last year in the back country. Um, I felt really good elk hunting this year, especially. So I was able to keep up with younger guys and guys that looked fitter than me. I was still able to, to keep up with them. And I felt good. Having said that, I, I just want to be better. So I'm going to continue down that path and been staying consistent. Actually just got home from the gym on that, but physical fitness, I think is maybe the best thing you can do, especially if you're elk or mule deer hunting or any type of like Western hunting, just being physically fit. I don't want to be the fat dude, you know, sitting in a tree like, uh -huh. I don't, I, I think it's our responsibility to have physical fitness to get out there and chase these animals down. And you're never going to be more physically fit from them, but there were times I saw elk on the other ridge and I looked at my watch and was like, that's oh, getting dark. And most guys would have turned away and I didn't and it paid off. So um, physical fitness, that's number one. Number two. So this year I put an arrow in a very large mule deer. I actually put two arrows in him and I did not recover him. And I believe the first shot was very good. The second shot was at 62 yards and it was very bad. Now, when I first got into archery, I was obsessed and I went and I was shooting every single day. I was going to Mile Square Park, our local park here, and I was shooting out to, you know, a hundred yards, putting them in a, in a softball little paster that I had. Like I was shooting great. That has fallen back since that time. And this year I did not spend near as much time shooting. I sort of had like, a lot of the reason I was shooting was just getting these bows set up. You don't just go buy a bow from a shop and just, oh, you're done. It's not like that. There is copious amount of tinkering happening with these year round to get them exactly where you want them when fall comes around. And fall is finite. I've, you know, I've heard the elk shape guy say it, September is finite. We only have so many hunting seasons left in our life. We have to make the most of every single one and do everything we can to, to give us the best success to harvest that game. And I, I'm looking right now, right here, my sight is still set at 62. I'm still sitting right at 62 where I was when I shot that elk, or sorry, when I shot at that mule deer and, uh, and I shot high. So that, that's not good. Um, I'm gonna have to fix that for sure. Um, I wanna spend a lot more time shooting this thing. So I've dedicated to no matter what, every day putting 30 arrows 
uh, downrange here at my house, I can actually shoot out to 42 yards, the furthest I can go. But I can sit there and I can work 20 yards, I can work 30 yards. But also not just that, but kind of specific training. So like shooting from one knee, shooting from two knees, shooting from awkward positions, like you're never gonna have just that perfect stance, at least in my experience at all the animals I've thrown arrows at, which is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've killed seven animals, eight, eight animals. So, you know, uh, it, that's pretty good for a guy who just started doing this in 2020. So uh, a lot of that is due to my friend Leland and his, you know, amazing wealth of knowledge and just him inviting me and taking me on hunts. And uh, I just got obsessed with it. And I spent a lot of time going out and hunting, but <clears throat> I didn't do as much shooting this year. I want to do more for next year. Um, I tracked that deer. I bumped him. I saw him bedded up and he saw me and I bumped him and I backed out for another two hours and I went back looking for him. I spent 12 hours looking for that deer and I never found him into the, into the night. Um, and I never picked back up on his blood trail. It was really, I was really bummed. Um, it still hurts me. And in my head, it's like, well, I put one good shot in him and yeah, I should have waited longer before going in. But what if that second shot was through the pump house? That's what I keep thinking. I keep thinking about that second shot that I gut shot. I still have the arrow and uh, it's just dirty, stinky green, just the thing you don't want to see. So, you know, what if I put the time in? What if I had spent more time shooting? You know, that, that 62 yard shot would have been, you know, a good double lung or, or even a heart shot and I would have recovered that animal. So it's been gutting me. I, I'm gonna, once this snow melts off, I'm gonna go up there and just do some hiking with friends and see if we can't find at least the corpse of that deer. Uh, it's, it's really, it's like haunted me this whole time. So that's one thing I wanna work on. I'm very happy with my current setup on my bow. Um, yeah, I would love to buy a new bow. The new bow from uh, John Dudley, Knock On, is amazing. It's an amazing bow. I'd love to own that. I'd love to have the new, uh, what is, this is V5. They're on, I think, a V7 now. I'd love to have one of those. The new Matthews looks insane, looks amazing. I'm sorry, RX7. Yeah, this is the RX5. Uh, the RX7 from Hoyt is the one that is, everybody's like, oh, it's so much better. I'm like, shut up. So I have a Hoyt RX-5. The new Matthews is unbelievable. Like it's just such a nice bow. I got to shoot one recently, but I'm just gonna stick with this bow for next season and then see what happens in 2023. Cause I think some of those big companies, PSE and Hoyt are gonna be coming out with a new flagship. And uh, that's something I'll definitely stop and take a look at for sure. But for now, my RX-5 is great. I have a UltraView sight on a XL landslide, uh, the Picatinny mount. But so I'm happy with the bow setup. I'm going to mess around more with stabilizers. I have kind of smaller stabilizers on here, but because of the geometry, this is actually like a 13 inch stabilizer. So I might go a little longer out here. I might do a longer one from this point here. I'm just gonna tinker more this year going into the new year. And then the other thing I'm going to work on more, and I did a little of this last year, is practicing. I'm not, I will not hunt with this. I've just seen too many guys, had too many friends, and seen too many YouTube videos of guys that are like swearing they hunt with this, and then they go out and they flub a shot. And uh, I don't want that to happen to me. I still want the control of that thumb trigger. But this is basically the exact the exact same thing as my thumb trigger, but in a back tension release. And my plan is to practice with this back tension release. So this is the Carter Evolution uh, 2.0. And it's exactly like the fit and feel of it. And the, the barrel is the same that I have in my primary release, which is the Carter Wise Choice. So here is that back tension release right here. And I am planning on spending a ton more time on this thing right here. So the way these work, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, you basically hook it onto your D-loop here. 
and you pull this down to enact the safety, which will make it not go off. But the second you release this here and start to pull back into the shot, it's a surprise release and it dehooks. Then you just recock it like this, put it back in, pull, and it releases like that. So I'm going to do a lot of work with these. Um, a, kind of my thought and what I've been hearing from uh, different, different people that I trust a lot is that a back tension release is a really great training aid to really help you with your shot sequence. So I plan on shooting with this a ton this year. Uh, another thing I want to do is I didn't get to duck hunt once this year, not once. I need to like find a way to duck hunt more in California. I, I, I'm basically doing the public land thing and uh, it sucks. And you know, you're waking up at one in the morning if you want to sweat line it, which means you don't have a reservation, but the people who don't show up for reservations, they give slots to, you know, this thing called the sweat line. It really stinks to wake up at 1.30 in the morning, drive all the way out to the spot and get sweat lined. And then even in the sweat line, you still don't get a blind. So having said that, I'm not going to shoot any ducks sitting on the couch or sleeping in. So my plan for next year is to go at least five or six times and uh and even if i don't get on in on any of the draws just go and start sweat lining it especially on days like wednesdays you know which is kind of a dead day out there um i want to go and and i want to i want to uh you know i want to shoot some ducks i'm out of duck right now and it just really bums me out and i love 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 duck hunting it might be my favorite hunting is, is for elk, but it's a close second between whitetail and duck hunting. Duck hunting is really, really fun. I got absolutely obsessed with it in 2020, and I did a lot <clears throat> of duck hunting. I, I was able to get some good draws. I had some friends that invited me on their draws, and uh, now none of those friends like go back because the California duck hunting system, just it really sucks. Um, it's just hard. It's hard. It's tough to get on. There's too many people wanting to hunt and not enough places to hunt. So it's a big bummer, but, uh, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys are planning to do. My year next year is, uh, is I'm, I'm going to go back to Southern Utah. I have this place in Southern Utah that it's public land and the tags over the counter. <clears throat> this will be my third year going back there. I really feel like I'm, I'm comfortable in that place, I'm really comfortable hunting that area. I know the land real well. I kind of have a general idea where the elk are. I've got really good lookouts. I can where I can go, you know, do good glassing and such. And um, I've had good luck getting on animals there. Having said that, this year one of the things that really jacked me was I ha I was able to take a shot on a really good elk, and where I was hunting, I can't shoot a bull. I have to either shoot a spike or a cow. Now, what I didn't understand was what a legal spike was. So I saw this elk and I thought he was not a legal elk. And then <laughs> I, uh, I told some friends from, uh, from the area that are guides out there that I saw for dinner that night. And uh, you know, I told them the whole story and they're like, why didn't you shoot it? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, that's a legal elk. Like that is a spike, you know? So I just didn't understand the laws. I have to, if I'm going to spend that kind of money and time away from family, I need to understand the laws, what I can and can't kill because that definitely, it, it cost me a real good elk. It would have been a big elk with a lot of meat on it. And uh, yeah, it's still, it's just one of those things. It's, it's like a live and learn, you know, a thing that you kind of have to go through, but I would like to not have to go through that anymore. And I would suggest to you guys too, wherever you're going, read the entire book on your regulations. Know what you can and can't harvest in that area. Because I tend to lean more towards the side of like can't harvest. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it definitely hurt me. And, and, you know, I was being too safe. So I'm not saying just YOLO, send it. I saw, things I saw hunters do this year in the elk woods were mind blowing. Like, one guy chasing down a herd of elk on a ridge and just 
flinging arrows into the air, into this giant herd of elk, hoping to just hit something. It, it blew me away that I saw that. I'm like, there's like baby elk. And like, what are you doing? You know, and I talked to guys like, well, hey, man, I just sent it. You know, it's just a good old boy just walking in the middle of a field chasing a herd of elk. I, I couldn't believe it. It was disgusting to me. And people like that shouldn't have the privilege of harvesting an animal like an elk or anything, in my opinion. So don't be that guy. Understand the rules. Do the work. Get out there. Always be tinkering. And if you don't hunt, go hunting. Find a way to go hunting. I would recommend starting off dove hunting. If you're anywhere in the Western United States, go dove hunting in Yuma, Arizona. <laughs> it's the best hour and a half of your life. It's so much fun and it's cheap and easy to do. Most people have a shotgun. If not, go buy yourself a Remington 870 pump shotgun. And that's what I had out there my first time. And I had a limit and like, I think my limit was like 40 minutes. I had a limit. So, uh, you know, get out there, go do some hunting. And if you want help, uh, channels that I can recommend, uh, if you're into elk hunting, elk shape, uh, YouTube channels, amazing. The guys on Born and Raised Outdoors, amazing. But for knowledge, especially in the archery world, I cannot recommend more John Dudley with Knock On, N-O-C-K-O-N. Uh, check out his website. He has all these crazy learning tools in there and anything he sells is good. Anything he recommends is good. Uh, he's an unbelievable archer and hunter and an even more amazing person and coach. He's actually a good personal friend of mine. And it's nice to be able to call him when I'm like, what do I do? And he's pissed I don't have one of his bows and I have this. But, you know, it's this is the bow I bought. I liked this bow. I wanted a carbon bow. And um, I'm glad I bought this one. So get out there, guys. Set some goals. Do your part. Don't just expect to show up and kill something. You've got to put the work in. You have to, or you're just going to get over it, and then you wasted all this time and money and energy and time away from family. So get out there. Hunting season is finite. You only get so many of them in your, in your life. Don't wait till next year or the year after that. Start right now. The season's pretty much ending. We still have a little more duck hunting happening, but the season's pretty much ending. And, you know, but now is the time when you should be working. Now was the time back in 2020, I really started hammering down and putting in the time. And my 2021 year was unbelievable. I killed a lot of animals. Everything I went after, I killed that year. It was, it was ridiculous. I had so much fun and I got freezers full of meat. And I, um, luckily I've got some more meat for those freezers this year. So I'm very much enjoying it. In fact, I'm gonna go make myself an elk backstrap right now. God bless you guys. Like and subscribe. Support the channel. Share these things. Oh, my Instagram got hacked, so sorry. Uh, don't follow me on Instagram anymore until hopefully I get that thing back. But yeah, God bless you guys. See you on the next one.